Okay, so yesterday we talked about side angle side and side side side, and today we're going to talk about three more ways to prove triangles are congruent, and then this will be the total five ways that we have to prove that they're congruent. So the three that we're talking about today are ASA, AAS, and HL. So again, ASA, what do you think that's going to be? Angle side angle. AAS is what? Angle angle, angle, angle side. HL is hypotenuse leg, and we'll talk about that in a second. Why are you giggling? There is no ASS. Just to, there is no such thing as angle side side. Okay, so that isn't a thing, so don't write it on your test because it's not a thing. So ASS is not a proof that we can use, okay? So we are going to talk then today about angle side angle, AAS angle angle side, and HL, which is hypotenuse leg. So if it's angle side angle, what do you think that means about the side that you need? It has to be the included side. And remind me what included means, Charlize? So the line and the line between. Yeah, it's like the line that connects the two angles. So for example, if I draw this triangle right here, and I say that I have this angle is congruent, and I also know that this one is, if it's A, B, C, which side would you need? Which side do you think you would need if you were going to use ASA? You would need AC because AC is the one that's included between those two angles. So if it's ASA, you need the side that's between those two angles. So for example, this triangle that's in this example right here, VUX and VWX, what do I know about VUX and VWX? What did they give me already? that this is a 90 degree angle. This angle right here, X, V, W is a 90 degree angle. So if 90 degrees is right here, what do you know about X, V, U? This is also 90 degrees, which means these two angles are what? Okay, those two angles are congruent, all right? Together they would be 180, they're supplementary, and they are also congruent to each other. What else do they tell you? What else do they tell you? What do these little red dashes tell you? UXV and angle VXW are congruent. So I know that these angles and these angles are congruent. And then are there any sides that I know are congruent in here? Which ones? XV is congruent to XV. What? No, XV is congruent to XV. How do I know that? They're the same line. So XV is congruent to XV. What property do I use to prove that again? Reflexive. reflexive property. So when do I use the reflexive property? When I'm looking at a picture, when do I know right away I'm going to use the reflexive property? Gabriel? If they're facing each other and they share a side, right? So whenever they share a side, whenever there are two triangles right next to each other, either like the left right side or the top bottom, when they're right next to each other, you know that those are congruent. So if these two sides are congruent to each other, then can I say that this is congruent based on ASA? Yes, because this angle and this angle are congruent to this angle and this angle, and then the side that's in between them is congruent. So we could use ASA there. <laughs> Questions on ASA? Okay. Angle, angle, side, AAS, means that it needs to go in the order of angle, angle, side. So in this picture right here, we've got HJG, we've got angle G, angle J, and then this side right here. This would work for angle, angle, side. Yesterday, we would have said that you can't tell that these are congruent because it wasn't angle, side, angle. It wasn't the congruent ones. But here, we can use angle, angle, side. So really, to figure out which theorem you're using, you've just got to figure out the order of the stuff that you have, basically. So for example, if I give you this one right here, What theorem could I use here to prove that these two triangles are congruent? Side, angle, side, right? Because it's the angle that's included in there. If I have this one, which one would I use?
This one would be SAS because it goes side, angle, side. Here, what would this be? Side, side, angle. Side, side, angle. Okay, side, side. I'm sorry, I did that wrong. What would this one be? Angle, angle, side. Okay, angle, angle, side. How can you tell the difference between angle, angle, side and angle, side, angle? If the side is not included, then it's angle, angle, side. So it's basically just the order that you write it in. So this would be angle, angle, side. But what if you read it from here to there? If you read it from here to here, there isn't SAA is not one that we use. So there's only five that we have. For this one? Because we only have two. Because the angle side angle would be if you had this one right here. Because it would have to be the included one. Yeah. So if the S is in between it and the angle side angle, the S is in between in that lettering, A-S-A, then it would have to be the included side. If it's not included, it's A-A-S. Angle, then you'd have to skip a part. So you can't do that. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, so you couldn't do angle, side, angle, because you're skipping over another angle in there. Okay, so I want to use, I want to use AAS to prove that these two triangles are congruent. So what are my givens here? What's my first given? AB is parallel to ED. All right, when I'm looking at that, if that's a given, if I know that that's a given, then I need to use that at some point in my proof. Remember with, true, with two column proofs and with givens, I never give you anything that you're not going to use. So if I give you the fact that they're parallel, you're probably gonna have to use that. And if you're given that two lines are parallel, what can you prove based on the fact that two lines are parallel usually? What can you use that to prove? That like something is what something is congruent. Okay, you're probably going to use alternate interior, alternate exterior, corresponding, something like that. So the first thing I want to look at, if these are parallel lines, do I have a transversal? What's my transversal? Either AE or BD. All right, so you need to visualize it like if these are parallel, anything connecting them is going to be a transversal. All right, so that's my first given. My second given is BC is congruent to DC. That's another given. All right, so if BC is congruent to DC right here, then that's already congruent. Is there anything else you can say before we even worry about the parallel lines? Is there anything else that you know? C is a midpoint. So C is a midpoint, that's true. Is that going to help us, though? I agree with you that C is a midpoint because if those are congruent, that's true. But that doesn't let us prove that anything else is congruent. So that's a good thing to know, but it doesn't really help us. So if you write it down, it's not wrong. It just doesn't get you anywhere further. But that's a good point. There's vertical angles in there. The two things I want you guys to remember to always look for, vertical angles and reflexive property. Always look for vertical angles because it's in things all the time. What are the vertical angles here? ACB and ECD right here. So angle ECD and BCA or ACB. All right, so angle ACB is congruent to angle DCE based on vertical angles. All right, so based on vertical angles. So now I've got this side and this angle, all right? What else can I prove? What else could I prove? Keep in mind, these lines are parallel. If I extend them, and this is a transversal, what else could I say? Alt yeah, which ones are alt-int? Oh, Isn't it C and like What angles would be alt-int? Let's see, A, B, C, so this one right here. Okay, so if this one, what's the other side of the transversal? D. C, D, E, right here. Okay, so these two would be alt int. So A, B, C is congruent to E, D, 
C or E D B E is fine, but E D C, and that's based on alt interior angles with the parallel lines. Yeah. Okay. So something that, and that's why I draw them and extend them like that. It's really hard for me. I don't know if it's hard for you guys. It's really hard for me to visualize what the ang like when I draw it like this. It's really obvious to me which ones are alt int and which ones are alternate exterior and that. So I understand where you're coming from. It does make it really difficult. That's why I extend them. I'm also going to tell you more often than not in an actual triangle problem, it's going to be alternate interior because they have to be inside the parallel lines. Otherwise, it wouldn't be like a triangle. So they're going to be inside. You just have to figure out if this is my transversal, if one of them is on this side, what's the other one that's on the other side? Sometimes if you have it on paper, it's easier if you like flip it too. Mm -hmm. If you flip it to look more like this. All right, so there's our alt int. So now, what could we use to prove that the triangles are congruent? This would be ASA, right? So that would be ASA because I have this angle, I have this side, and I have this angle. So that would be ASA. They want us to use AAS, but as long as you can prove it either way, I don't really care. Could I find that this angle is congruent to this angle? Yes. This is also based on what? Alt int. That's also based on alt int. So you could also say that. You could say BAC is congruent to DEC. It's not necessarily the long way. We could have skipped this step right here because this is the same step. So then number five, I'm just going to say triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EDC. And then that's based on AAS. Or you could say ASA. So I recognize that like probably the hardest part, the step that most people miss is this alt in step. I would say the biggest thing to remember is if they tell you lines are parallel, you're probably going to have to use that at some point. I don't know. It wasn't. It was um, on the quiz that you guys had. It, had, it was like third angle theorem. We hadn't even done this yet. So I don't think there were parallel lines on the quiz. Are you going to get the proof No, because people still have to take it. OK. All right, so at your boards, I want you guys to tell me if you, oh, that's a lie. HL. HL is hypotenuse leg. So this kind of triangle is what kind of triangle? That's a terrible drawing. But this kind of triangle is what kind of triangle? A right triangle. And this kind of triangle is also a right triangle which means that without even telling me anything, I already know that there is what? 90 degrees. 90 degrees. So they already have one congruent angle. I don't need you to tell me that. I already know that it's true. So HL is hypotenuse leg, which means in a right triangle, the only two things you need are the congruent hypotenuse and a congruent leg. And the hypotenuse is what? the longest leg, that diagonal leg. So if I told you this was congruent to this and this is congruent to that, then that's enough for you to tell me that those two triangles are congruent. Okay? So you could tell me that those two triangles are congruent because the hypotenuse is congruent to the hypotenuse and any other leg is congruent to any other leg. So if you see a right triangle, this one is typically the one you're going to use. All right? Okay, so at your boards, I want you guys to do these five. So you're telling me which theorem you're using or if they're not congruent. Is it the three that we learned today or the mm -hmm. If this is like four inches long, the same line would have to be four inches long also. Okay, so hypotenuse leg, again, like we said, is when you have a right triangle, you don't need to have anything besides a hypotenuse and a leg because you already know automatically that these two angles are what? Congruent because they're both 90 degree angles. 
This is similar to having like two sides and an angle, but that's not a theorem that we can use in this case unless it is a right triangle. So if it's a right triangle, then we can use this. Does anybody know why this is enough information? There's no side side angle or angle side side because that would be ass. So there's none of that. Okay, Jennifer, Pythagorean the Pythagorean theorem. What is the Pythagorean theorem? A plus C a squared plus B squared equals C squared. In any right triangle, you can use A squared plus B squared equals C squared to find the missing third leg, right? So if we did all that work, if we did A squared plus B squared plus C squared, since we have two of the sides, we could find the third side, right? And since you could find the third side here, you could also find the third side here. So hypotenuse leg is essentially like having side, 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 only you don't need to do all that work you know automatically that the third side would be congruent because it's a right triangle. A right triangle is a special kind of triangle. Can you use the Pythagorean theorem for any triangle or just right triangles? Right. Just right triangles, only for right triangles. They're really, they're a special type of triangle, okay? So because of that, you could prove that these two missing sides are congruent, but you don't have to do that. You can just say hypotenuse leg since it's a right triangle. All right, so determine if you can use the HL congruence theorem to prove these triangles congruent. If not, tell what else you need to know. So I want to try to prove VWX and YXW. So VWX, which is this big triangle down here on the left, and then YXW, this big triangle here on the right. So could I use hypotenuse leg to prove that these are congruent? First of all, to use hypotenuse leg, you need what, they need to be what kind of triangle? A right triangle. Are these right triangles? Yes. yes. Do you have a leg that's congruent? Yes. yes. You've got YX and w. WV. So those are congruent. Okay. Do you have a, hypo a hypotenuse that is congruent? Yes. yes. Where's the hypotenuse? The YX. WX is the hypotenuse of which one? Both of, them. of both of them. So is WX congruent to WX yes. based on what property? Reflexive. Reflexive property. So could you use HL for this? Yes. All right, so yes, based on HL. They're congruent. What about VWZ? So VWZ, this smaller right triangle right here, and YXZ, which is this one right here. Do you have enough there? All right, so are they right triangles? Yes. Do I have a shared, or do I have a leg that is congruent? Yes. yes, I have a leg right here and a leg right here. Do I have a hypotenuse? No. no. What's the hypotenuse of this one? Z. WZ right here. And what's the hypotenuse of this one? Z. ZX. Do I know that those are congruent? No. no. So could I use hypotenuse leg? No, I can't use hypotenuse leg. All right, does that mean they're not congruent? Not necessarily, it just means we can't use hypotenuse legs. So let's see if we can figure out if there's another way that we could prove that they're congruent. Is there anything else that you know about them? Yes. Okay, what? Um, w, Z, V, and Y, Z, V. Like this one right in here? Uh -huh. And Y, what? Y, Z. Y, Z, X. How come those are congruent? Those are vertical angles. So this angle is congruent to this angle. Are these two angles congruent? Yes. Are these sides congruent? Yes. So what could we use? Angle, 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 side. You could use angle, angle, side. All right? But the question says, determine if you can use the HL congruence theorem. If not, tell what else you need to know. To use HL, we would need to know that WZ was congruent to ZX. All right, that's what we would need to use HL. Okay, when should you look out for HL when the triangles are right? Only if they're right. If they're not right triangles, you can't use that because there's no such thing as a hypotenuse in another triangle. Okay, go ahead and do these five at your boards. <coughs> 